Okay, so now we are going to discuss the equivalent lateral force procedure in which we have discussed a while ago that it is the static force procedure in accordance to the NSCP section 28.5.2. So this is a linear static analysis. Okay. So we are going to use uh, formulas based on the NSCP 2015. And also we will um, derive those formula using the design response spectra. So the formula are, is based on this design response spectra found in figure 208-3. So this is a design response spectra in which the x-axis is a ratio of the structure period over the T sub S in which you can find the formula here. And on the y-axis is the spectral acceleration ranging from CA as the minimum value and the maximum value of the spectral acceleration is 2.5 CA. So to determine the base shear, we are going to use the formula base shear V is equal to CS times W in which as I have said before that the base shear is a certain percentage of the seismic weight. Okay, so for CS, we will assume or we will uh, assume the formula for CS is equal to the spectral acceleration here multiplied by the importance factor times the res over response modification factor okay the spectral acceleration is ranging from um 2.ca to 2.5ca here in our design response spectra okay so i is the importance factor which takes into account the uh, importance or the um Performance of your structure that you will need to add strength okay, to your structure depending on the type or the function of your structure. So for structures that is expected to still function after a severe earthquake, okay, um, the importance factor is greater compared to those structures that uh, is mostly not expected to that is not of great importance to function even after a severe earthquake mainly because it the importance factor will increase the amount of base shear okay computed so that it is expected that the increasing the amount of base shear will result to a more stronger uh, structure and the response modification factor is a system based uh, factor that can be found on table 20811 so this factor is um, is greater if the ductility of your structure is greater and it is lesser if the ductility of your structure is also uh, lesser. Okay, so the design base shear is equal to CVI over RT times the seismic weight W. So the max that is okay. The design base shear is equal to CVI R T over W, in which T is the structure period in seconds unit. So this can be found in um, equation 28-8 in NSCP. So the maximum design base shear is equal to 2.5 CAI over R times W. That can be found on Equation 28-9 in NSCP, the minimum design base shear is equal to 0.11 CAIW in, to, in equation 28-10. And additionally, in zone 4, V is equal to 0.8 ZNVI over R times W found in equation 28-11. So the spectral acceleration here in the um, y-axis of our design response spectra, so we have the me, mom, mommy, mom. So this is the maximum spectral acceleration, 2.5 CA. And this is the minimum spectral acceleration. Okay. So you can see here, 0 0.11 is equivalent to 1 over 9. Which means if we are going to use the formula for the, the base shear CSW, um, it means that the R is equal to 9. 
So let's see. Um, here. So here is okay. For the minimum value, okay. So we have C A. The spectral acceleration is C A. Here, this is C A. So we multiplied by I, the importance factor I. Okay. Over R. So R over R, that's 0 0.11. That's 1 over 9. So R is equal to 9 here for the minimum design base. Shear times the seismic weight W. So here for the maximum design base shear, um, the spectral acceleration maximum, that's 2.5 CA. So here that's 2.5 CA times I, the importance factor I over R, response modification factor R, times the W, the seismic weight W. So for the design, so that's the maximum uh, design base here, and here is the minimum design base shear. So here in our design base shear, the spectral acceleration is equal to CVI over R. I'm uh, sorry, CV. No, no, sorry. Um, CV over T. So that is the spectral acceleration multiplied by I over R times the base um, seismic weight W. Okay. So for uh, periods of vibration, we have two methods to compute for the periods of vibration. We have the method A or the approximate periods of vibration. And we also have method B or the Rayleigh method. Raleigh method. Okay. So for first for method A, the approximate periods of vibration. So we have T A or the period A is equal to C T times H N raised to three four, in which C T is equivalent to zero point zero eight five three for steel moment resisting frames, or zero point zero seven three one for enforced concrete moment resisting frames and centrically braced frames, or it can also be equal to 0 0.0488 for all buildings. And also, it can be equal to 0 0.0743 over square root of AC. Which is, this is the formula for the AC for structures with concrete or masonry shear walls. Now, HN is the height of your structures of your structure above the ground. But here, what if there is a basement? Will you consider the basement as part of your computation for HN? So, it is said that when in doubt, use the lower reasonable value of Hn. So, the lower the value of the Hn, the lower the value of the period, the lower the value of the period, if you are going to use the formula CVI over RT, the lower the value of the period, the higher the value of the base shear. So, that's the idea why it is uh, suggested to use the lower value of the uh, Hn. But, the another consideration you make... Uh, think is that um, the computation for HN is above the ground because the um, displacement displacement of your structure due to the lateral loads happens above the ground. So there is ex no there is uh, no lateral displacement expected to happen under the ground so that's the basement you know because the soil surrounding your structure will serve as the confining a uh, strength to prevent the lateral displacement of your structure below the ground but if ever there is an instance that the uh, soil surrounding your structure under the ground is not enough to resist the uh, lateral displacement of your structure under the ground then you may up to consider using H and uh, considering the uh, height under the ground of your structure. But in practice, usually um, H and is typically the height of your structure above the ground only. Ha, yun lang yung consideration natin. Okay. Now another method to use for the structure period is the T B, uh, the Rayleigh method or T sub. B. Now, this T sub B will require you to compute for the equivalent uh, weight, seismic weight of your 
uh, each level of your structure and its corresponding rigidity to compute for the corresponding lateral displacement in each uh, level of your structure. Now, this is a more detailed computation for the um, structure period. And usually, the uh, computed value for the structure period using method B is lesser compared to method A. So, why not use method B if it is lesser? Um, the lesser the value of the structure period, um, the higher the base shear, right? But the code will limit your uh, computation using this uh, using this um, section in the code, in which the structure period should not be great, uh, should be less than. 1.3 TA in seismic zone 4 or the structure period computed in uh, using method A and the TB or the structure period using method B should be less than 1.4 TA in seismic zone 2. So usually, the structure period using method A governs. So some designers or engineers, um, they do not uh, try to compute the structure period using method B because um, one, method A is easier, and two, usually it governs, and three, a uh, met Raleigh method will require you more data to compute than using method A. So, method A is easier to compute. So, the idea is that why waste time to compute for method B when usually method A will still govern? But, um... For if you are going to use a computer tool, okay, you, um, using structure period using method B, it's, it's much easier because all the data are already provided. You do not need to um, compute for the data. So now let's compute how to vertically distribute the base shear. Okay. So here in our figure on the right side, so this is our building. So we have uh, level 1. So the level 1 corresponds to the H1. So this is the H1, the height of the level 1. So level 2 is we have the height, story height H2. Level 3, we have story height H3. Level 4, we have story height H4. And for the last level N, we have story height HX. Okay. So the total design base shear is equivalent to V is equal to FT, which is the additional force at the top, plus the summation of the lateral forces. Okay, so here is the idea. So here is the base shear we have computed a while ago using uh, whichever governs to the design base shear, the maximum and the minimum amount of base shear. So whichever governs to the computation of the base shear, so, you will find it here. So, it is assumed that the base shear will act on the uh, ground, on the base of the building. So, that's why it's, it's called the base shear. Okay. Now, this base shear will be distributed laterally okay, to your structure in each level. So, if you can see here the arrow, um, the higher the level of your structure, the greater the amount of the lateral force it will receive. And the lower your level, the lesser the amount of lateral force it will receive. So, if you were going to imagine, uh, uh, if you are on the top of a building and there is an earthquake, you will feel that the lateral displacement is greater on the top of the building compared when you are in the second floor or third floor of your building. So, it is a manifestation that um, the idea is that when you are higher on the building, the uh, force that you will, that the structure will receive is greater. Okay, so the higher the level, the greater the amount of lateral force that it will receive. Okay. So that's why the load distribution here is a trapez in trapezoidal. Okay. Now, we will add an additional force at the top F sub T. Okay. F sub T is um F sub T is not included to the 
uh, competition for the base shear. So here, um, base shear is distributed in your building. That's F1, F2, F3, F4, Fx. So the summation of F1 up to Fx. That's equal to the base shear V. Ft now is only an additional load. Okay, depending on the structure of your... Uh, depending on the period of your structure. So... It is an additional load added at the top of the building to consider for the uh, larger displacements because of the height of the structure. So, for long story, I'm uh, sorry, long period structure on which the structure period is greater than 0.7 seconds, the additional force at the top is equal to 0.07 TV or structure period times the base shear V but should not be greater than 0.25 the base shear. So, and additional force at the top is zero when the structure period is less than 0.7 seconds. It means for short story, uh, for short period structures, okay, uh, additional force at the top should, uh, is need not to be considered only for a structure period greater than 0.7 seconds. So, the lateral loads Fx or F1, F2, F3, F4, Fx is equivalent to the uh, V, okay? So, that means uh, excluding the additional force at the top, the base shear alone here. Uh, base shear V is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, multiply to W sub X, the weight of the, the seismic weight per story, of your structure times hx the story height of your uh, level that you are going to consider okay over the summation of the uh, seismic weight in each level times the uh, story height so later on um, in the next videos i will have in an example for this distribution of the lateral loads and hn is the summation of the story height for example, for F, for let F2, yeah, let's say F2. So the lateral loads at level 2 is equal to F2. So F sub 2 is equal to the design base, is to the, the base shear, computed base shear, excluding the additional force at the top, multiply to the W sub 2 or the seismic weight computed for to the level 2 times HX, so that's H2, okay, or the story height here all over the summation of the uh, seismic weight times the story height. So that's the F of X.